tiredness is starting. <laughs> to, the tiredness. To it's Sunday in. at Comic Con. <laughs> it's Sunday at Comic Con, and I don't drink coffee. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Bex from Trista Bites and I'm here with Vince who is one of the creators of Skies of Fire and this is pretty awesome. It's lovely to see a massive world with airships and alternate universe in fact you guys have created. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, we're, we're super big fans of airship and airship technology and uh, yeah, we figured, you know, we want to see something really epic and cool uh, on, in comic books with airships and uh, why not do it ourselves? Yeah, that's usually the best approach if you want to bring more to a genre you love is to have about creating your own one, really. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about the storyline in Skies of Fire? Yeah, sure. Um, so the story of Skies of Fire takes place in a, its own fictional universe and it follows the story of Captain Helen Pierce as she goes on the hunt for a pirate who's destroying her kingdom. We're big fans of crew stories like Firefly or, okay. uh, you know, and we wanted to have a memorable cast that really comes together. Uh, they're butting heads with each other, but they need to, you know, get along in order to accomplish the mission. So, Do you see anything important. from the point of view of the, the pirate as well? Mm -hmm. Do you see their storyline? Uh, briefly, but uh, the story more focuses on, on our heroes. Um, there, there is a, some ominous moments where you do see the antagonist prop up here and there, uh, but that's um, that's yet to be seen in, in further issues. Uh, the shadowy figure, <laughs> the bad guy shadowy figure yeah. kind of trope where they will be revealed yeah. later. Absolutely. <laughs> I love the amount of world building that you've done with this comic, and that was one of the things that made me come over here, is that you guys have drawn diagrams of airships, you've drawn maps, you've put a lot of thought into that. What led you to wanting to create all those extra parts? Well, it was important for us to create a story that was believable. And uh, growing up, you know, uh, The Hobbit was one of my favorite stories. Yeah. And it has, you know, maps and all these extra details. And when we were coming up with Skies of Fire, that's, that's something that we thought was second nature to us. Yeah. Uh, we wanted to create something that was huge and immersive and people could get lost in. Uh, so when we did issue one, uh, we created a map for it. Uh, we were working on document material so that it kind of went with the comic. Uh, and since then, we've just kept growing that uh, uh, issue by issue so that we could really get people to explore it on their own. Yeah. So. And it's not just like a small map. We're talking like entire pages of newspapers <laughs> with adverts and a, 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 sh yeah. a shanty, effectively, that yep. they would sing on these airships. Like, you must have just poured a lot of hours into creating just all those extra bits, just on top of all the actual comic itself. Absolutely. Um, for us, it's important that everything fits, that everything works. Uh, so it's not just frills and, you know, uh, a spectacle that when you look at an airship, it's actually designed from the inside out and everything functions the way it should be in this world we created. Um, uh, one of the small things that I like to point out to people is that we know the circumference of this world uh, and that was necessary to discover how uh, the prime meridian and the equator in this world right. are placed so that we can actually accurately uh, follow the ships through coordinates. Uh, so we don't want to just throw out random numbers or random knowledge that isn't substantiated by the rest of the world. We want everything to fit perfectly. So like people a puzzle. actually plot the routes and they would mm -hmm. work based on what people are saying in the comic Absolutely, book. yep. That's yeah. an insane level of detail. <laughs> like yeah. No one would probably have known. said it now, so now everyone's going to check. But until we'd said that, no one would probably have ever thought to double mm -hmm. check your coordinates. No, absolutely, right? absolutely. Uh, the, there have been actually one or two people who have read our stuff so thoroughly they would come back with questions yeah. and they would be like oh this is a really cool idea or oh that's really nice uh, I noticed that you know uh, this really matched with this and when we found out that they were like looking at it at such detail yeah, we were just super excited because that's you know it takes a lot of time to make all these calculations and to research and study all the world uh, that uh, to have someone come up to us and actually put all the things together uh, it, it really is such a you know honor for us uh, yeah. we're really happy about that it shows that the fans reading your work are is engaged with the world you're creating as you are which is really yeah. really lovely to see and you've got a different artist to draw the maps than yeah. the comic book artist as well so someone who's actually qualified in creating maps absolutely uh, our map in in the book was made by joseph vandal and he is an amazing cartographer from germany uh, who has a phd in heraldry and cartography so he is super talented uh, and when we got him on board, he just wanted to make it as real and alive as possible. Yeah. Um, and uh, recently, I was able to go online and I found other cartographers actually looking over his work and posting blogs out 
on the techniques that they found he used to make our maps and uh, oh, cool. we're sharing it out with people so that they could make their own Skies of Fire styled map. Uh, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's really nice to see that, you know, that level of detail and intricacy uh, inspires other people to actually do their own work and uh, it's nice to see that going and spreading around. Yeah. So how many comic books have you got out mm -hmm. at the moment for this? We currently have five issues. Uh, we are kickstarting issue six. Uh, that should be done by end of November. And uh, seven is almost completed in ink, so that should come in next year. And we shall finish the, the story arc at the end of next year. Yeah, and then you'll do another hardback, mm -hmm. which will be a complete, I'm assuming, at that point. Absolutely. That's what fans have been craving for. They, they already love the first hardback of the first four issues and we want uh, to reward them with a second one to complete the adventure. Yeah. Do you have plans to do another mm -hmm. arc after that for you? There, there is some stuff in the works. We're still kind of figuring it out. Um, is it all kind of top secret at the moment? You're not allowed to uh, uh, yeah, you can tell us. Uh, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> well, we, we have uh, ideas like making an RPG. Uh, that, that, of course, takes a lot of energy. Uh, so. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out where to put our time and our efforts in, whether if it's another story arc or actually dedicating ourselves to getting this tabletop done. Yeah, as a D&D &D player, <laughs> the, everything I saw in the comic books with the, you know, the, the magazine pages yeah. and the adverts and things like that, that reminds me of assets that very good DMs make for D&D, right. &D, so it obviously lends itself to this kind of tabletop world awesome. already. Yeah, so. no, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the passion of adventure, and for me, that's what I enjoy the most. I, I don't necessarily see the end goal as the achievement. It's the journey that matters. And, uh, you know, part of that is going through these documents and figuring it out yourself. And I think that is truly what an adventure is. Uh, so we don't like telling people what to do or how the world is. Uh, it's up to them to decide what it is. Yeah, it kind of makes sense to me now why you wanted to do something about mm -hmm. airships with a captain exploring and chasing mm -hmm. someone down because you're sending your main protagonist right. on an adventure yeah. and a journey at the same time as experiencing that as you create the world for yeah. them. Ag exactly, yeah. Uh, captain Helen Pierce, uh, she's been someone that has been inspired by uh, a lot of heroes that, that we, we enjoy from you know different books and media. Um, and so we wanted to imbue her with, with this uh, ambition, this drive to just go out into the unknown. And I think that's something very, very human, uh, you know, in, in everyone's uh, basic nature. It's, it's our idea to go out and, and be curious and to learn more. So does she go on a, a character arc and exploration development mm -hmm. of her own over the story? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, she gets to see a part of the world that is quite... Uh, hidden away from the rest of society okay. and uh, that's something that she has to come to terms with and that's also something that will affect not only her but her entire crew as okay. uh, they realize the scope and scale of what's happening. Ah, okay, so we're not going to give any spoilers, so if you want to know what these things are, you will need to, to read the comic book to find out. Mm -hmm. And if you want to influence these guys to turn this incredible world into a tabletop RPG, then I guess uh, start pestering you guys on social media <laughs> would be the best place to do that. that. That is always awesome, yeah. Any feedback, any, any thoughts, ideas, like we always take it on board, because that makes us do what we do and make it even better. Uh, so yeah, any anything at all would be much help. So did you kickstart the, the first run of comics? Uh, yeah, we kickstarted our very first issue, um, and uh, that was that was a scary experience uh, for sure, because uh, we've never done it before and we didn't know exactly what we were doing 100%. Um, but uh, we were able to get uh, enough money to get the first one done, uh, and enough to complete the second one as well okay um so it's always a good sign if yeah. your kickstarter for one issue pays for two no definitely definitely and uh you know it, it got us into the track of being able to accomplish the rest of the story i remember that the first issue was was the most difficult for us because we didn't know exactly how the time uh, scale worked from production to actually delivering um and uh getting it to the very end was was quite a challenge especially when uh we were on a deadline to really meet our backers' expectations. So. But I think people, they're backing indie comics because they love helping out mm -hmm. these new ideas and these different projects. So usually they're pretty understanding of your first one that if you do wiggle a bit with your timelines, but presumably right. by now, I mean, they keep coming back, so you've brought yeah. it down to a fine art. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, and it's been really awesome. Time and time again, we, we see people coming back, diehard fans who 
really love what we do and, and they just keep supporting us and, and that's been such an honor to, to have them you know come on board and uh, every now and again we like to you know get them either drawn in or uh, you know give them give them some perks for being uh, there to help us when when we needed uh, you know the funds to complete another issue. Uh, so probably not long before we see people cosplaying as themselves within your comics mm-hmm. at Comic Con. Fingers crossed. Yeah, that's that's one of our dreams. We we really like uh, we really like to see people just have fun with this and have fun with the project. And uh, you know I, I've uh, I've seen people come uh, here with like a little sketch they did with an airship, and yeah. you know that's been super cool. So yeah, a cosplay would be would be super amazing. Cool. Definitely. So your airship designs are, are functional, effectively, aren't they? We think that in a, to make a believable world, we need everything to actually function properly. Uh, so n- nothing can be designed just for an aesthetic purpose. Uh, it needs to actually work in the world according to uh, the designer's uh, needs. And so uh, what we did was we found an artist named Alex Bacour who made these amazing ships. And he's a huge World War One, World War Two fan. Okay. Um, and... Uh, he used all his knowledge and experience from uh, tank, plane, and airship technology of that period to really help us develop and hash out a lot of the technology in this world. It's super crazy to see him work and develop because he would ask us all these questions about the cultures of the world, uh, the, their geography, uh, temperate climates, uh, uh, and tundra, and things like that, so that he can get the colors right, uh, the shapes right, uh, and make sure that everything is uh, to spec to our story. That's an insane level of detail. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's something that we, we take pride in doing, so uh, it's well worth the effort. <laughs> yeah, and it's lovely to see creators who are that interested in evolving and, and exploring their own worlds, that they go to that level and aren't just saying, like, oh, that looks cool, no one will notice that. You're actually sort of going to the point now where if you do keep expanding this world, you have everything set up in a way that can keep believably expanding. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, that, that's my biggest fear is that someone's going to come up to me and be like, oh, you know, there's this one thing in this comic that doesn't make sense. And I'm like, oh, no, we spent like, you know, so many years developing it. And there's that one one thing that we, we forgot about. No, uh, nobody as, as knowledgeable about the comics as the yeah. fans of the comics. Yeah, pretty There will much. always be somebody at a Comic-Con when you guys are up on a main stage talking about this. And they'll mm. be like, Airship 31B. <laughs> The left port engine (laughs) wouldn't actually have run at the speed it was on page 72. Exactly. Because they are that invested that they will notice all Mm -hmm. of those things. No, definitely. I've I've spent hours talking with with fans about, you know, different parts of the world and different things about it. And uh, it's been it's been such a a, such a great experience because it's a it's a two way street. You know, we learn more. uh, They learn more from kind of what we've been building. And uh, in turn, you know, we we get great ideas. And uh, I'm like. Oh, cool! That's such a great idea. Let's like try to find a place for that, and uh, you know, it's it's nice to see this world become more of a like community project in that sense. Uh, so uh, expect more of that to come when we're uh, rolling out the RPG. So yeah, I think that's one of the great things about indie comics and about crowdsourcing mm-hmm. the funds to make things is that you can get the readers a lot more involved than you could if you worked for a really, really big publisher or something like that. So it allows you to create a community around what you're building. And as you say, it becomes a two-way street and you can feed up ideas as much as you are presenting them with a product. They are helping you with your inspiration as well. And seeing your own project through the fans' eyes has got to be a really fun experience. Yeah, definitely, for sure. Uh, There's so so much talent out there, you know, not just, you know, Comic-Con and Comic Village, but uh, some, you know, people who are getting my book off online and taking a quick read they email me back and they they bring up some really cool stuff so i'm excited to see uh, what other stuff is coming up in the future what influenced your choice to make this in a other world rather than doing it as kind of an alternate history ah, uh, alternate history is is kind of a, a touchy subject for me uh i feel like you know uh with alternate history there will always be that 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 stigma that oh it, it is based off of reality okay. and so people might not be pulled as much away from it and uh, it's also something that you'd have to tread carefully with uh, but by placing it in its very own unique universe and uh, you know building it all up from scratch we're able to really go and beyond the boundaries and not worry about things like that mm-hmm. and uh, just more creative freedom I yeah guess. more creative freedom more investment in into different kinds of ideas and thoughts um, and that's that's what it's all about. It's experimentation. It's about 
you know, seeing seeing all these different nations and these different ideas and how do they develop without, you know, that uh, over over looming uh, idea that oh, this is based off of. United States or Italy or yeah. so you uh, could have like made that. it slightly easier for yourself by having things exist with real maps and real right. coordinates but you just thought you'd go all out <laughs> and go for the most difficult labour intensive way possible to do it absolutely for the art <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about the art it's a really lovely detailed art style who's responsible for that the art style is a collective effort by the entire team. The main artist is named Pablo Pepino, and he comes from Argentina. His art style really blew us away when uh, when he applied for for working on the project. And I think the brunt of the talent is is him, just really visualizing kind of our ideas and making sure that they they really come to life. Brian is our colorist, and he lives in Indonesia. And I think he's the second half of that. Uh, yeah, that talent. The colours are really <laughs> rich and vivid. Absolutely. You kind of gone for something that was sort of sepia and oldie worldy. There's some right. really beautiful, bold colour choices in this. Definitely. Yeah, we, we wanted to stay away from that kind of sepia tinted, uh, old uh, fashioned kind of look uh, because, you know, we, we've seen quite a bit of that and we wanted something with more vitality and life. And Brian just hit the nail on the head with that one. So we're, we're very happy with that. Aside from that, we have also other side artists like Demetrius and Christian. And they do a great job to just really get that Skies of Fire feel out of, uh, out of their work. So it's really good. Skies of Fire looks absolutely incredible. Uh, where can people find you online and on social media? We have our own website uh, called mythopia.us. Uh, that's where people can find our work, purchase it and support our cause as well as check out our blog and see what we're doing every day. Well, thank you very much for talking to me. The comic is beautiful. I recommend people check it out. I will put you know links below us here. There will be some links down in here. that box down here. And if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe and do the bell smashing and all that kind of stuff we have to say on YouTube now. And of course, thank you to the Patreons that allow me to come to events like this and see these incredible new indie comics. So again, thank you for speaking to me. Yeah, and I you wish so you much. all the best of luck with your comic. Thank and you. we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> it's Sunday at Comic Con and I don't drink coffee. No coffee? No, no, no caffeine no at all. No caffeine at all. No, this is this is no caffeine wow. you're looking at here. Is this caffeine I'm looking at? That, that is a lot That's of caffeine. caffeine. That, this That's is a lot no of caffeine, caffeine right here. Yeah. <laughs>